Hey everyone, uh, just checking with today's daily update. Now I don't actually have a, a sort of gameplay update for you today, um, but I want to sort of go over what I've actually been doing um, with my time. Um, now I encountered a, a sort of a bit of a sort of systematic design flaw uh, with how I've been handling objects and similar. Um, so just to sort of go over the basics, um, I've got like a, a sort of base object class, uh, and this has got things like um, x, y, position, uh, speed. You know, things like that. Um, I've got a sort of color class. Um, so color comes in sort of two um, uh, representations. The first is like a, an enum that I've made called a color label. Um, so if I label, uh, and this can be, you know, red, blue, green, etc., etc., uh, and that gives me a sort of easy way to compare. Um, so say, for example, I've got a barrier. Uh, and I've got the, the player coming towards it and they touch, um, it just means I can just compare these two's colour sort of very efficiently and very easily. Um, and then I've got a function that takes a colour label and transforms it into um, float data. And it turns in, into an XM4 float. Uh, XM float 4, sorry. Um, so that's one value for red, one value for green, one value for blue, and then one value for A. And those are all between 0 and 1. Um, which is just a floating point number um, and then that could be sent to the vertexes of the object. Um, normally they're stored in the actual sort of vertex data directly um, because that's how I'm sort of um, passing it through to the GPU. Um, everything in this game has like a sort of assigned color with it so that makes sense. So in terms of um, you know a basic object that's pretty much you know what it's got. Uh, it's got some you know other stuff like uh, is it affected by gravity um, you know it's got some basic uh, functions um, like updating its position um, and you know uh, it's got a flag for being marked for deletion as well um, so I can then you know check on the next frame uh, do I need to clear this out of my list of objects so that's pretty cool now ooh, uh, in terms of um, the the next stage up, uh, I've got a derived class from this, uh, which is a hitbox object. Um, yep, uh, and that's literally just got the the sort of base data uh, as well as the sort of data for a hitbox. So uh, in the case of like a square sprite, it's going to have the uh, the top, uh, the bottom, the right. And the left, um, and that's pretty much it. Now, the way I'm storing these is as an offset, so uh, it's got the x y base position um, as like a uh, you know variable in the in the object. So what these are as you know, say for example, I want the top to be wherever the base position is plus five, and I want the bottom to be minus five, the right to be plus five, and the left to be minus five. And then I've got a I've got a square, um, and that's all that is. And then it obviously provides some functions for um, comparing, uh, you know, two rectangles, uh, or for example, I've got a circle hip uh, hitbox, which all it does is it um, to compare two of these. All I need to do is take these four points uh, and then see if they're within the circle. Now, obviously, that's not always perfect. Um, so, say for example, um, I've got this right edge um, here, uh, and that's you know, right here, uh, no, none of these points are going to be, you know, in that circle, um, but it would still have a collision, so there's, you know, further code for that. Anyway, getting away from the actual sort of main point, um, ultimately this is how sort of objects are, and then from this I can derive, you know, specific objects. So say, for example, I've got the player sprite, um, I've got like the the cells, etc, uh, etc. Et now, to process all of these, um, what I do is I have my data loaded in chunks. Um, so a chunk, uh, literally all it consists of is basically a bunch of individual objects um, and then provides just a way to sort of loop through those objects and um, update them and draw them um, pretty much. Um, each one's got sort of an identity, a base position that it's spawned in as, and that's pretty much it. Um, it also assigns each object a sort of unique ID. Um, so that I can, you know, check for specific IDs and messaging if I need to. Now, there's a bit of a problem uh, at the moment, and this is sort of what I've been looking at today, uh, in that the chunk data looks at objects. 
So it's got a uh, STD vector. Uh, um, of the object class, which is up here, um, uh, or rather object pointers, because it's a lot easier to assign it that way. That, but again, I'm getting away from the point. Um, so I've come into a bit of an issue now where um, because chunks are looking at this stuff here, um, it's very difficult for objects to spawn any uh, extra uh, objects correctly because they don't really have a good way to pass this to the chunks. Um, so when I was uh, creating the the sharp cell, um, what I was doing is I was sending a message with its XY position on death um, and then that way I can uh, you know, pass away from some extra data like, um, you know, what object it should be spawning and, um, you know, if it's a key, what type of key it is and all that sort of thing. But the issue with that was that um, it sort of re required a unique message and it, it's very messy. Um, it's, it's you know, I then have to look at this message from a, a higher level. Um, so the actual game itself, um, when it's processing messages, um, and then that reads that that data and then inserts it into this chunk um, or rather I've got like a chunk manager um, which obviously my my writing is horribly uh, out of the way I've got a text function but I feel like freehanding it so uh, it is what it is um, and then this uh, all chunks are sort of in an, a vector in the chunk manager and then that way I can sort of more easily um, look at that and just go okay update all the chunks um, which in turn run their internal updates uh, draw all the chunks etc etc uh, and then that way it's a lot easier also to load and unload them um, because again each chunk now an ID and that's how I've been sort of doing it now as I say because I'm having this issue with spawning I would it would be a lot more work to uh, just spawn objects every now and again so what I'm going to be doing uh, and what I've sort of started doing today um, is moving the update functionality out of these two uh, and just literally have these as just pure data management. Um, and what I'm going to be doing instead is having it so that uh, the object um, layer over here has like a, a sort of object manager. Um, in much the same vein that these do. Um, the, the sort of job of updating all of these and drawing all of these. Um, this will be doing it, but it will be accessible at this sort of level, uh, or even technically one higher, I believe. Or, well, it'll be sort of available at this level, I guess. Um, and then that way I can look at this uh, and all objects can see this. Uh, there's no sort of um, uh, looping dependencies or anything like that. Um, and so every, ob every object can then just go Okay, get the object manager's reference because um, I'll be using a sort of singleton design pattern for that. Um, and then it can just go, okay, spawn an object. Uh, and then that way it doesn't matter if I've got, you know, all, all of these chunks um, loading their data. Uh, they can just talk to the object manager instead of, um, uh, you know, just spawning them within themselves. Uh, and I think that's going to be a neater way to do it anyway. Um, so, yeah, just a bit of sort of redesigning uh, and a bit of refactoring the way I've sort of got my my code <laughs> um, a lot of everything that I've sort of learnt and done here is very much self-taught um, so a lot of the time I'm not going to get things right necessarily the the first time around um, I, I've been programming for a very long time now um, but I never sort of learnt anything correctly it was all very much self-taught so yeah um figuring out things like this as i go is is part of the the joy of it really um so yeah i've been sort of working on this and just moving the stuff out of here um out of the the chunk layer uh, and into the object manager um so hopefully by the end of tomorrow i can actually show off the world one boss uh, i just want to sort of give you a bit of context behind why it was uh, sort of taking so long so yeah anyway thank you very much for watching uh hopefully i'll have an update for you tomorrow take care everyone